Guys, for my guiding rig, I'm gonna take you through it real quick. Um, I fish full time throughout the year. I use a, just starting with my boat, I have a aluminum, a wide boat for everybody for st stability. Um, you can put several people up front. Um, my electronics, I've got the Garmin Live Scope up front. I've got a 1222 that's just solely for the Live Scope. And I've got a transducer on the trolling motor for when I'm chasing um, single fish. I just follow the fish around with the trolling motor. Got a wireless foot pedal here so I can take it behind the clients and uh, stay behind them and stay on top of the fish while they're fishing here up in these two seats. I'll sit behind them in the middle and it'll keep me on the fish. So that's my front end setup. I've got a 1042 back there on the console and that's for my clients also. It's synced into this one so they can watch it back there. If we're chasing one fish at a time, uh, there's no reason to have several people up here. So we have one person at a time chasing a Roman fish. Their buddies can watch the screen back there. So it's super fun and we enjoy it. Um, I'm going to take you through my settings on my Garmin Live Scope on the 1222. I'm going to show you um, what I go through and the settings I use year round. I've got the settings set a particular way and the only thing I mess with is my forward and my depth range and sometimes my gain but very rarely. This is kind of a one stop shop. You set your screen up like this. I do in several clients boat and no matter the water clarity um, or more muddy water, whatever the water be, this has been um, the ticket for me for my success. So I'm going to click on menu. I don't have the touch touch screen just for the fact of getting finger smudges and all that. I like to keep the sc screen clean as I can um, throughout my day of fishing. But I'm going to go on here. I'm going to hit menu and I'm going to go down to sonar setup. Um, you can see all these. This is just the depth and forward range. That's I'm always adjusting that um, depending on what fishery I'm fishing. But we're going to go down to sonar setup. We're going to click on it. I prefer the black emerald color. Um, it's definitely optional between everybody. Uh, it's definitely a preference. Everybody uses different colors. I don't think the color matters near as much as um, what we're getting ready to get into. The noise reject, I always leave on medium, and the TVG off. Those are the two most important things, in my opinion, when I'm chasing fish. And it's kind of another preference, but if you're having a hard time seeing your bait or having a hard time picking through fish, this is, this is the main setup that I use year round on any lake. I've got um, how deep the water is on the top left corner here, the degree of the water, and what my batteries are running. It's always good to pay attention to the bolt of batteries. Um, if you're not running around 11 and a half to 12 volt, you're gonna have a harder time with your live scope. You're gonna wonder why you're having issues. Your battery is very important to keep high if you're wanting to be successful on live scope as well. Um, as far as the numbers on top, that's something I always adjust. My forward range, you can always mess with that. Um, just bring stuff in, makes the picture clearer when you get closer to the fish. But for now, you can follow these lines in like 5, 10, 15, 20. However far that is away is how far it is from my um, trolling motor. My trolling motor tells us where the, <clears throat> where the fish are. When they're bright and it's at 15 foot, that means that wherever that arrow of that trolling motor is pointing is where that is um, to put the bait on top of that fish. That's why I put the transducer on the trolling motor. For my depth, guys, I always adjust again. I always like to leave a little bit past my bottom. I'm always going to be, if the, if the bottom is uh, 40 foot deep, I'm going to run it all the way because sometimes you can miss fish that are sitting under your screen. If I, bring my, if I bring my depth range up like that, so now I'm 10 feet. Anything under 10 feet, I'm not going to see. So I always want to make sure the bottom um, is in the picture because that bottom can hold fish a lot of the times. So I always keep that in mind as well. So I'm going to go into this channel that I just talked about and uh, we're going to chase some uh, a few Roman fish and show you exactly what I'm talking about uh, and look for these fish out in the channel. Chasing fish. So already when I get into this channel you can see several several fish will be sitting in it. A lot of times you're going to almost have the majority of all the fish in the lake will be mixed into this channel. Guys, so I'm still um, trolling through the channel here. I, find, I found a potential target right here. What I'm going to do is, that's already moving quite a bit, I'm going to hold my, my transducer on that fish. I'm going to keep him bright and I'm going to watch his, uh, his actions. And I'm going to see if, if I see any tail movement, anything dramatic that makes me think that that's not a crappie. Um, the, the one thing I tell everybody is a crappie, if you've ever been to Bass Pro Tank uh, and you've seen those crappie in the tanks, they're hardly ever moving there. It's almost like they're frozen in the water. That goes the same as in this lake. They'll do the same exact thing. So the less movement, the better chance you have of it being a crappie. I'm seeing a lot of tail action with those fish and uh, 
uh, I'm gonna guess that those are probably a drum, carp, or etc. on a trash fish. All right, we're coming up on a trash fish. You can see the difference um, between the crappie and trash fish because there's constant movement and, and feedback coming back from that fish. Another telltale sign is that big split tail on the back, but you're seeing so much movement. See how he's moving across that screen, shining from the head of him all the way to the tail. You're seeing a bunch of feedback. You can actually see the so, tail. Yeah, so a nine times out of 10, that's not gonna be a crappie. And another, it's a rectangle fish. And if I can find a crappie here, they're a perfect circle compared to a rectangle. This fish finally held still, so we'll get a better look at him. We'll get that split tail, hopefully, if he holds still long enough. See, so now he's wanting to sit like a crappie, but the telltale sign now is he's more of a rectangle and he's got a split tail. The split tail's kind of hard to decipher through, but the longer you look at that screen, the more you'll learn that. But he's a big rectangle on there, and we're gonna get closer to him as lo long as he sits still for us. You can see that back down on top, too. Yeah, so, 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 he's, so he's sitting there, not moving just like a crappie would, but he's got a big floppy tail, and then there he goes again, he'll start moving. When I, I told you, you'll see that huge tail swimming right there. Crappie will start swimming. When they swim, you won't see hardly any movement. That Just that big circle, there's a crappie right there. So I went from that trash fish to a crappie. See how perfect circle that is? And it's round. So that's the difference. That fish isn't shining head to toe. He's giving good feedback and he's not moving at all. There's no movement. But they're so tight that you can't hardly tell. They'll actually split up when you get close enough sometimes. See them ball out, yeah. see them split. They just scattered out. So that tells you fish know the presence of the boat because I wasn't doing anything. And as soon as they get within that five to 10 foot, they take off. So I found a crappie here um, at 25 feet, meaning that it's 25 feet in front of this trolling motor. So as soon as I get within 20 feet or so, I'm gonna zoom this in to really narrow down my fish. And I'm gonna get like that right there. That's how I, <clears throat> I like to present my bait because it really lets me narrow my bait on top of that fish's nose. So I'm still holding my transducer on that fish and I'm not seeing any, any movement. It's just still a doll circle sitting there uh, kind of waiting for an opportunity at a, at a shad, minnow, whatever they're wanting to chase. So I'm gonna slide up here. Now I'm within 12 fit, feet of that fish. I've got a 14 foot rod and I'm back a little bit. So within 12 feet is a perfect um, drop for that fish. So I'm just gonna reach it out here and drop it on that fish's nose. You'll see those two dots coming down. Those two dots is that itty bit and that um, split shot above it. And I'm just gonna try to really zone in on that fish and put that bait on that fish's nose. And I'm gonna follow this arrow with my tip of my rod. And I'm gonna really pay attention to where that transducer is looking to really get my bait as bright as a fish. If your bait's as bright as a fish, that means you've got it lined up just right. I'm sliding into this fish here. And we're about to get a reaction. This winter time, these fish really don't want to move much. You've got to really narrow it and put it right on their noggin. I've got all around that fish, but I haven't presented it right. The reason I know that is that fish still hasn't moved. If he runs off, if he chases the bait, he will do something if you get that bait close enough and present it right. Sometimes you'll have to hold that bait there for 20 plus seconds to get that fish to react as well. I mean, I'm just holding it there right on his nose and being super patient. So on the bottom was the one I'm chasing. And I got the bait close enough and he pushed away, which tells me he's just not in the mood. And you really can waste a lot of time trying to get a fish to eat that, that doesn't want to. Okay guys, I've, I've tuned in on another fish here. This fish right here. All right, there's my two dots there. I'm gonna try to lower it right to his nose there. He's still just sitting there. Not moving too much. I'm gonna try to get that bait in front of him. He just, my bait got a little close to him and he just kind of 
skipped off a little bit. You'll see them move. You won't see any tail action still on that fish, which tells me it's a crappie. You're not going to see any flailing tail, but when a crappie takes off, if you spook it or you scare it, usually you're going to see a, a flip and it's going to glide through the water. When it glides through that live scope and it just sits there and floats on, um, nine times out of ten, that's a crappie. So I zoomed back out after I spooked that fish. I'm out there looking 50 foot. I see a potential fish here, so I'm going to chase it. I'm going to get closer with the um, trello motor, which takes my live scope closer. It brings it in and makes things clearer. And then I'm going to zoom it in on that fish to really make sure what I'm seeing. I'm still staying on that same exact fish and I'm still not seeing much movement at all. It's a dull, perfect circle. Um, it's looking just like a crappie. So when he gets close enough here, we're gonna drop on him and see if we can get him to eat. There he is sitting right here. So he's sitting right at 15 foot, slide a little closer. There goes my bait there, those two dots. And I'm just gonna slowly set it on his head there. There he sees it. And there he, he just ate it right there. He came up really slow and bit, bit even slower. He, hook set was perfect right in the top of the head there and got that itty bit thread fin he bit super slow if you weren't watching that screen close enough um, he just came in and slacked the line out solid eating fish right there and beautiful they got a super white color now because that muddy water keeping the sun off of them these shanks here from crappie pro are, are tough enough to flip super heavy fish in i've flipped over two pound fish with this hook and it still does not uh, bend or or give it all so that's a nice healthy healthy fish there nice belly on him beautiful sometimes it doesn't hurt to drop on <clears throat> fish that doesn't look like a crappie because that's how you catch those monster fish. A lot of times I'll look at it and be like, there's no way that's a crappie, but then you'll drop down on it and be two, three quarter, two and a half pound fish. Yank. There you got him. That's a good fish. Bring him over here. There it might be a two pounder. It's a nice one, brother. Look at that. Yep, that's a beautiful fish. Did a good job there.